Welcome to Coherent Solutions presentation on Wavelength Agile Photon Doppler Velocimetry. I'm your host, David McCormick, Technical Sales Manager for North America. I'll be showing some of the basic concepts of photon Doppler velocimetry in the first half of this presentation. If you're not familiar with PDB, you can go to the www.coherentsolutions website and download an application an app note here. Here's the URL. One of the handy things that you'll find in this app note is that whenever measuring Doppler shifts at 1550 nanometers in PDV, there's approximately one gigahertz of Doppler shift for every 776 meters per second. This is a handy rule of thumb to remember. Let's start with some PDV basics. If I only have a single laser, this is known as a homodyne type setup, meaning there's really only one wavelength. In this case, I show a relatively high power laser, a 2000 milliwatt laser. I have a splitter here for a number of reasons. 2000 milliwatts is a lot of power to be putting through these components. And so this helps cut the power down. As you can see, we start with 2000 milliwatts after going through this one by four splitter, approximately 500 milliwatts. It also allows these other unused channels to be used for other channels, but we'll get back to that later. Next, it goes through a 1090 coupler. 90% of the light goes through this upper path and 10% comes down through the lower path. The next component is known as a circulator. Circulators are very interesting components. Anything that you put into port one will come out of port two. Anything that goes into port two will come out of port three. And anything that goes into port three will come out of port one. As you can see, we have a little bit of loss going through the circulator. So we have roughly 300 milliwatts on this side. The whole purpose of this is to send the light to this probe, which is gonna be bouncing off to the target. As you can see, we have a target here. In this case, we're gonna have a static target so it's not moving. So what we have is 1550 nanometers wavelength of light, which corresponds to this frequency in Hertz. This frequency and this light is bouncing off of the target. In this case, since there's no motion, there's no change and there's no Doppler shift. So the wavelength coming back through the circulator is going to be the same as coming out. Now these two signals are going to mix down here in this coupler here. So we have the light that's reflecting back from the target and we have the light that is from the 10% of the splitter. Both of them originate from the same laser. Hence, this is a homodyne setup. As these go in and mix, they're detected by the ODE converter. If there were any wavelength difference, this detector would show the beat frequency. In this case, since there's no motion on our target and we have a single laser doing homodyne, there is zero hertz of frequency difference in this example. Okay, next we're gonna look at the homodyne setup with an actual target that's moving. I forgot to mention from this last slide that this is a dual channel variable optical attenuator and inline optical power meter. It comes in very handy for adjusting the various levels before you mix them together. This is very important PDB. Okay, so let's look at our target here now. We've got a target that's moving towards the probe at 776 meters per second. As we mentioned in one of the early slides, that corresponds to a Doppler shift of approximately one gigahertz when working at 1550 nanometers. As you can see, the 1550 nanometers has this kind of frequency that's incident on the target. Once it reflects, it actually increases by one gigahertz and travels back towards the circulator. Once it goes through the circulator, it mixes down here in a coupler. So the unshifted original 1550 nanometer light is traveling down through this path. Independent channel power can be controlled here and here. The two mix in this 1090 coupler. Since there's a difference of one gigahertz between the two frequencies, what we actually get is a beat frequency of one gigahertz. The ODE converter here, which has approximately 20 gigahertz of bandwidth in this example, will create a sine wave that can be visible on an oscilloscope that has approximately one gigahertz of frequency. Okay, let's look at the same setup with the homodyne, except in this case, the target here is actually gonna be moving in the opposite direction. So now the target is moving away from the probe at 776 meters per second. This is the same velocity as the previous slide, except in this case, the Doppler shift will be in the opposite direction. 
So there's the same amount of frequency shift for this 776, except relative to the high power laser back here, it's in the opposite direction. Once they mix in the 1090 coupler and go through the ODE converter, they again create a one gigahertz beat frequency. But as you can see from this homodyne setup, you cannot tell the difference between a one gigahertz beat frequency that is from a target moving towards the probe or away from the probe. This is one of the weaknesses of homodyne setups and also one of the weaknesses of starting with zero beat frequency. Now we're gonna move on to what we call a heterodyne example. So instead of having a single laser, we're actually going to have two lasers, the target laser here at 1550. And for this example, a tunable laser, which is at 1550.004 nanometers. I chose 1550.004 because that happens to be approximately 500 megahertz difference in frequency in the optical domain. Now, as we send this through, instead of having a single laser that's split, the reference is coming through its own individual channel right here. In this case, let's not move the surface. So again, we have a static surface. That means there's no Doppler shift in the light that's reflecting off of this here. But since we're starting with the frequency in the mixer down here that's slightly off, what we actually get is a 500 megahertz difference in the beat frequency. So even though there is no velocity initially, you can actually see the 500 megahertz beat frequency on the oscilloscope before the experiment begins. This is very handy because it allows you to adjust these independent levels here and you have an active signal with which to work with. You cannot do this with homodyne. This is one of the advantages of having heterodyne PDV. Let's look at that same heterodyne example, except in this case, let's actually have the target moving. Again, we start with a reference laser that has 0.004 nanometers above the 1550. This is approximately a 500 megahertz difference in optical frequency. In this case, the target will actually be moving towards the probe, again at 776 meters per second. This will introduce a total Doppler shift of 1 gigahertz. This 1 gigahertz Doppler shifted target laser goes back to the coupler, and it's now mixing with the reference. But since the reference started with a 500 megahertz difference and there's a one gigahertz Doppler, the total difference in beat frequency is 1.5 gigahertz. And this is what you will see on the oscilloscope. Let's take a look at that same heterodyne setup, except in this case, the target will be moving away from the probe. Again, we start with the reference laser that is offset intentionally by 500 megahertz from the target. Now the target is moving away at 776 meters per second from the probe. This will create a Doppler shift of one gigahertz, same as previous slide, except because it's moving in the opposite direction, the Doppler shift will be in the opposite direction for the target laser as well. This means that when it comes back and mixes in the coupler with the reference laser, it's going to start from the initial condition of 500 megahertz, and as the velocity moves up to 776 meters per second, it will pass through zero and end up with a total beat frequency that is being detected of 500 megahertz. You will see this on a scope as a 500 megahertz signal instead of the previous 1.5 gigahertz. The scope does not know which direction that the frequency is moving, it simply is showing a trace. But in this case, as you can see, thanks to a heterodyne setup, you can tell that the velocity is moving away from the probe rather than towards the probe. This is one of the advantages of having a heterodyne setup as opposed to a homodyne setup. And also one of the reasons that you actually wanna offset your starting uh, reference a little bit from zero. I wanna pause here and just remind the viewers that the stuff you see in the center here is actually all contained in a single module from Coherent Solutions. It's available on a PXI form factor, as well as a standalone benchtop known as the Matrix Doppler. This is one of the most condensed PDV solutions on the market. Okay, so let's move on to an example where we actually wanna have a multi-channel PDV setup. In this case, we've taken our target laser and we have the one by four split that we saw in the previous examples. But we're also gonna take our reference laser and also split it in four ways. 16.5 dBm is actually plenty of power, but we'll get into that later. Now each of these signals from the target laser is going to its own Doppler blade here, here, 
here, and here. And the reference laser is now also being supplied to the Doppler blades here, 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 and here. So there's four separate Doppler blades. There's also four separate ODEs that I show here, here, and here. One of the problems with this setup is that if there's any kind of crosstalk between the channels over here with these probes, there's nothing that prevents it from coupling in to its neighbors down below here and here. And unfortunately, when you only have two separate wavelengths, such as the target and the reference that I'm showing here, you can't tell the difference when channel one is talking to channel four, channel two talking to channel three, and so on. This is one of the disadvantages of splitting a high power laser and splitting the reference laser. There's no way to prevent the crosstalk from bleeding in and actually getting into each of the adjacent channels. This is one of the weaknesses. I'm going to show you how to solve that on the next slides. Okay, we're going to start with that same four channel setup, but change it a little bit here. Instead of having a target laser that we split four ways, we're going to replace that with four separate tunable lasers. We'll do the same thing for the reference laser, four separate tunable lasers. Now, let's go ahead and set those lasers at their respective wavelengths. We set these at 1550.116, 1543.730, and so on. I chose these particular wavelengths because they happen to correspond to the ITU grids that are spaced 100 gigahertz between channels. Here I have a channel spacing of eight channels. I'll show you the grid spacing later. You also can set each of these tunable lasers basically at the same frequency and same wavelength as its corresponding channel one here to channel two here. And you have the liberty of setting the offset just like we did in previous slides so that you have a starting uh, beat frequency that is non-zero. As you can see, we still have four probes out here and they can be cross-talking to each other, except the spacing between channels is now 800 gigahertz. Eight channel spacing from the ITU grid is literally 800 gigahertz. The ODE has limited bandwidth down here. It's about 20 gigahertz. So even if you get channel two mixing into channel one or vice versa, you're never going to see those components because the beat frequency is well above the bandwidth of the ODE detector. In this way, you are very immune to crosstalk with this kind of setup. And it's all due to being able to split your lasers into four separate channels up here and have corresponding reference down here. On the previous slide, I mentioned the ITU grids. Here I show them in their complete table here. I'm sure you can find these online if you just search for ITU grid and DWDM, you'll find plenty of documentation on them. Here you can see the wavelengths and nanometers and the frequency here. By using DWDM components, I'll show you in the next slide, it's possible to save a lot of money by reducing the amount of scope channels that you have to use in order to have multiple channels in PDV. Now we're going to show you how you can truly multiplex these signals into a single scope channel. Here we have this uh, previous setup. In this case, we have the same wavelengths. But we're going to set each of the reference wavelengths that corresponds to the target laser at a slightly different frequency. I have 1, 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, and 4 gigahertz. Now, instead of having four separate ODE converters over here, I'm going to take those out. I'm going to replace them with just one ODE converter down here. And as you can see, we've added a new component called a DWDM optical MUX. This is a very simple device that if you actually have the right wavelength for each of the channels that this is designed for, it will combine all of them much more efficiently than a passive coupler. So what we're doing here is we're actually sending all four of these signals through this MUX into a single ODE converter. As long as you don't have too much signal level in each of the channels, you can actually view all four of these signals on a single scope channel. As you can see, when you actually do the Fourier transform then, you're actually going to have four separate levels that start at different areas. One starts at 1 gigahertz, 2, 3, and 4. This is called frequency multiplexing. 
you can choose how much you want to separate these channels depending on the spare bandwidth that you may have on your particular oscilloscope. In this way, you've eliminated three ODE converters and you've combined them all into a single scope channel, leaving the other three scope channels for even more. This is the path for having a 16 channel PDV with only four scope channels. Okay, in this slide, I've taken essentially the same setup and just rearranged it a little bit and added some components. As you can see, we have our four tunable lasers for the target. We have our four tunable lasers for our reference. And again, you have the option of setting these at their own particular offsets. What's new in this particular slide is on the return path coming through, after we mix them in each of the couplers for these Doppler blades, we're going to go through these passive fiber delays. This allows us to delay the signal from one path relative to the other in order to spread them out in time. And then we can combine them again in this optical MUX that has the correct channel spacing that matches the tunable lasers. This one path here then contains all four of those channels and we have a control here with another variable optical attenuator. This EDFA is an erbium dope fiber amplifier which can boost the signal back up in order to recover some of the lost signal through these extra components. In this way, you can actually spread these signals out in time and in frequency. So when you do your Fourier analysis, you will find that here they're separated in velocity, which is starting out as frequency on the scope. And here you can see that there's a certain amount of time between each of them, which is dictated by the length of the fiber paths. Almost this entire setup is available from Coherent Solutions in PXI format. Here we have the EDFA, the dual channel VOA and an inline power meter, a passive optical MUX, tunable lasers, four channels per module. We have an ODE selection. We have many passive trays, including fiber delay. And of course, there's the Doppler PXI. Coherent Solutions is really the only supplier of test and measurement PXI modules. And with the tricks I showed you in this presentation, you can actually get up to eight PDV channels in a single PXI chassis, which is pretty impressive. And don't forget, as I mentioned near the start of the presentation, each of the PXI modules that you see in this are also available in standalone benchtop units that are slightly smaller than the size of a cigar box, known as the Matrix series. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation from Coherent Solutions. I'm David McCormick, Technical Sales Manager for North America. Feel free to contact me with any of your multi-channel PDV questions.